Okay. Um, <clears throat> this week in the Come Follow Me, we're reading about the um, the ending of, of Christ's teaching uh, to the the survivors. And I really like to liken uh, this time period to uh, the events that precede the second coming. <clears throat> so there's prophecies, there's signs, there's wonders in the heavens, there's mass destruction, and and then there's this glorious um, uh, awakening and visitation of Christ and peace and harmony and people are of one heart and there's no contention. Now, <clears throat> I've shouted out a few times for Taylor and Tyler in Book of Mormon Central as they do come follow me. They're BYU professors and they're awesome. But I take issue with them on this one. Uh, I listened to their presentation and it was, it was really good until they got to, to um, uh, fourth Nephi. Um, and they, they uh, I always get them mixed up, but the, the shorter one, let's say, the shorter one. He, he said, you know, there's many times where it says, I think four, four or five times where it talks about that there was no contention and that that's why these people lived in harmony. Uh, he forgot the biggest part of why they're living in harmony for 200 years. And um, the biggest part was the visitation of Christ and his influence. The second, in my opinion, <laughs> someone suggested I should get t-shirts that, that say, in my opinion, um, <clears throat> Let's go back to chapter 9 of 3rd Nephi and find out why these people could live with no contention and live of one heart. Behold that great, okay, 3rd Nephi chapter 9, verse 3. And behold that great city Zarahemla have I, have I burned with fire and the inhabitants thereof. Hmm, interesting. I wonder why Taylor and Tyler forgot to mention this. And behold, the great city of Moroni have I caused to be sunk in the depths of the sea, and the inhabitants thereof, the inhabitants thereof, drowned. And behold, the great city of Moroni have I covered with earth, and the inhabitants thereof, not just the city, the inhabitants thereof, to hide their iniquities and their abominations, from before my face, and the blood of the prophets and the saints shall not come up, <clears throat> shall not come any more unto me against them. And behold, the city of Gilgal have I caused to be sunk, and the inhabitants thereof burned up in the depths of the earth. And yea, the city of uh, Anoha, uh, uh, Onaha, <laughs> and the inhabitants thereof, and the city of Mokum and the inhabitants thereof, and the city of Jerusalem, and the inhabitants thereof, and the waters have I caused to come up in, in the stead thereof, to hide their wickedness and abominations from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints shall not come up any more unto me against them. He repeats that. Oh, there's more. And behold, the city of um, Gadion, Gadiondi, and the city of Gadiomni, and the city of Jacob, and the city of Gib, Gib, Gim, Gimono, <laughs> and all these have I caused to be sunk, and made hills and valleys in the place thereof. And I buried up the depths of the earth to hide their wickedness and abominations, to hide their wickedness and abominations from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints should not come up any more unto me against them third time and then he goes more and behold the great city of uh, uh, Jacob Bugath and the inhabitants by by the king or, or by the people of King Jacob have I caused to be burned with fire because of their sins and wickedness 
which was above all the wickedness of the whole earth because of their secret murders and combinations. Oh, secret combinations. Interesting. Yeah, there's none of the, no conspiracies nowadays. That's all just hogwash. For it was that they that did destroy the peace of my people and the government of the land. Therefore, I did cause them to be burned, to destroy them from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints should not come up unto me any more against them. A fourth time. <laughs> and behold, the city of Laman and the city of Josh and the city of Gad and the city of Kishkumen have I caused to be burned with fire in the inhabitants thereof and because of the wickedness and casting out the prophets and stoning whom I did send to declare unto them concerning their wickedness and abomination. Fifth time. Sorry, I made the dogs jump. Um, and many great destructions have I caused to come upon the land and upon the people because of their wickedness and their abomination. Okay? So, do you think that the destruction of the wicked had just a little bit to do with the fact that people could live without contention? How could you leave that out? Taylor and Tyler, how could you leave that out? How could you leave that out? That all that destruction, all those cities, all the wickedness was destroyed so that a few people could live in harmony and, and have a society that was of one heart. That's a little detail that you might want to you know, interjected in there, you know, not just that they didn't have any contention. And so we can have that. We can have that today. We can live in peace and harmony because, you know, if we just try hard and have no contention among us, you know, we can do it. You know, it's really kind of bull because there's so much wickedness and abomination um, and, and uh, um, conspiracies and, um, that are for real, uh, that go on, and it makes it difficult, makes it very difficult. But things are happening, things are happening that uh, if we just look at this pattern in the Book of Mormon, there will be peace and there will be harmony, but there's going to be some massive destruction for those uh, that are finding themselves on the outside looking in, outside looking in. Now, okay, I'm going to switch gears just a little bit, just a little bit. Um, there's, a, there's a guy, I don't link anything, I'm sorry, I just, I just don't do it, but his name is Derek Walker. He has a YouTube channel. He's a, he's a minister in Oxford, England of, of a church there, and he is really, really good. And I credit a lot of this to him. However, I've had most of this in my mind already, and I've talked about it. But things are shaping up in Israel. You know, if you really go through and look at what Christ talked about to the Nephites and the Lamanites that were left, <laughs> that hadn't been destroyed, I love it when he says that the cities and the inhabitants thereof were destroyed. Okay? Okay. Um, okay, so Christ, when he's talking to, the, to this remnant of people that were left, if you really look at it, I haven't really calculated it, but I would say he talks more about Jerusalem and Israel, the land of Israel, the old Israel, than he does about the new Jerusalem and about this land of America or the, the Americas, okay? So... Um, and, and I've referenced this a ton, but in, in the April uh, ensign, uh, where the prophet get, did an article, so this isn't the conference ensign, this is the month before, uh, last April, and so, so the month before conference, April's conference, uh, <clears throat> which doesn't come out till May, the conference report, so this was the, the month before the prophet gave a great uh, uh, discourse on the the future of the church and the preparing for the second coming of the savior 
And he actually referenced more about Jerusalem and Israel than he did about the Americas. So <clears throat> I think there's a lot of events that are going to take place there that we here in the in the perfect land of America, we sometimes uh, ignore what's going on in the Middle East. So if we, again, um, Derek Walker, um, YouTube, and, and he's got this really pleasant British voice, and he's not of our faith, but he is a man of faith. I like that. I just made that up. Not of our faith, but a man of faith, a faith in Christ. And I really enjoy his knowledge of, of the Old and New Testament and his knowledge of Israel. So um, I have to credit him as well as my own experience. So <clears throat> I've mentioned this in, in some other videos, but just this past March when the COVID thing was all coming down, my son and I were in Israel <clears throat> traveling, exploring on our own. And um, it, was, it was an amazing, miraculous trip and the things that we saw. So if you go, if you go um, north of Jerusalem and west of the, uh, of the Jordan River, you have the West Bank. And it's, it's you know, the UN and others recognize that as, as Palestinian controlled some some person uh <clears throat> commented on one of my videos it said i said palestinian occupied and man was he offended that i would even say that because the palestinians have been there forever and i said well i guess you you don't uh uh believe in 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 uh in, in the the blessings of israel the blessings of israel that's what we're supposed to study and the blessings of israel and and the abrahamic covenant are priesthood posterity and property hello property the land of israel and that includes the west bank so i will defend the right of israel to have that land forever and ever and ever because that's what god said so yes the palestinians claim it and it's not theirs uh, god has has uh, uh covenant with Israel that that is their land. But right now it's recognized as Palestinian property and it gets a little confusing because you still have an Israeli army that protects the borders of Israel that include the West Bank. So it gets confusing. Now, my son and I traveled through the West Bank extensively and the, the scariest parts were, um, I can't remember the current name of the town, but the old city of Shechem, where, where Jacob, Israel, dwelled and where his well, the Jacob's well, and the area where Joseph was sold to the caravan heading to Egypt, we were there. And um, it's a sketchy place. It's a scary place. Um, Cana, where Christ turned the water into wine. West Bank, Palestinian occupied, not a very pleasant place to be. Okay, well, here's what's shaping up. Here's what's shaping up. If you go to, I would say from Ezekiel 34 or 35 to 38, um, you're going to see Gog and Magog. You're going to see uh, a phrase that shows up, the mountains of Israel, the mountains of Israel. This is the West Bank because it is the mountainous area of Israel. It's not the coast. It's not along the Mediterranean. It's not along the de in the desert at the Dead Sea. It's not, um, it, it, it could include Jerusalem. Yeah. It's in the mountains and all the way north of Jerusalem. That's the mountainous area all the way up to, the, to, to uh, Galilee and the Golan Heights even. Golan Heights are a little um, uh, um, east. Um, and so they're east of, of uh, north and east of, of the, uh, 
the the Sea of Galilee. So um, it was a miracle and a wonderful blessing that that the United States took the lead in recognizing the Golan Heights as as uh, Israel, as Israel, because that's a key key component to all this. Because right next to the Golan Heights, you have Syria, and then just west of the Gol Golan Heights and the west of Syria, you have Lebanon, and. You know, we've talked about this, but there's been some huge blasts there of ammonium nitrate. And, and uh, so, so here's what's shaping up and here's what could, could be happening. And I, I really think that this is for reals. Um, it could happen very, very quick. So the prophecy in Ezekiel, particularly Ezekiel 38, and I'll let you read, read those chapters, but... It talks about the mountains of Israel. And, and this is why this could happen. And this isn't to be confused with, the, with the, the, the Battle of Armageddon. That will come later. That would be in the Jezreel Valley. And that would come from the Mediterranean, in my opinion, because that valley goes um, right to the Mediterranean. And, and is not that far uh, north of Jerusalem. And that's where a huge battle could be. But prior to that is this battle. And it's going to come from the north. It's going to come from the north. And um, the Gog and Magog of this is probably Russia teaming up with Iran. And you have Turkey involved. The, the, I can't remember the guy's name now. But the, he's basically a dictator of Turkey. He's crazy, in my opinion. And, and so these countries are all teaming up together. And guess where they could actually pull off a, a big war? Now, now in, in Ezekiel 38, it talks about the last days. That this is in the last days. And it says he will gather Israel. So we know that this is happening because in 1948, Israel became a state and the gathering started. So this comes after that, 1948. Of course, we had this, the Six Day War in 67, and then, and then um, um, pretty much the current situation we have now in Jerusalem and in Israel came as a result of the Six Day War in 1967. And, and it's, it's pretty dang complicated. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So I don't have COVID. Just a cough. So, um, so if if these countries who are aligned with each other right now, and we're talking Russia, Putin, um, we're talking Iran, we're talking Turkey, and a couple of other smaller countries there, uh, all uh, um, aligned against Israel. Well, guess where they could go? to the mountains of Israel, which is what Ezekiel probably 34 through 38 talk about, the mountains of Israel. So they're not talking about all of Israel. They're talking about the mountains. And that's the West Bank. That's the Palestinian controlled, I won't say occupied, the, the Palestinian controlled area of Israel. And I could see the UN supporting that, and I could see the United States going, mm, maybe we don't want to get involved in that because they actually haven't attacked all of Israel, and they've just, they've just taken control of the West Bank and the Palestinian uh, control areas. So maybe that's okay. And, and it could happen because the Palestinians would want that to happen, and they're there. They live there. Um, but so do a lot of Jews, and the Jews will flee, it says. They'll flee. They'll flee from the mountains. Well, God is going to intervene in this. So he probably doesn't need the United States to do anything because Ezekiel and Ezekiel uh, 38, it says that he will intervene and he will rescue Israel. And he will get those lands back for Israel. And uh, it, it says that um, 
Gog and, and this is in verse or chapter 39, just the heading. Gog and Magog are going to be destroyed. And for seven years, for seven years, they they'll burn the weapons of war. For seven months they bury the dead. Then comes the supper of the great God and the continued gathering of Israel. The continuing gathering of Israel in chapter 39. So this is a great opportunity for missionary work after after this uh, attack in the mountains of Israel, in the mountains of Israel. Now, I'm not, I'm not a prophet. I'm not a spokesman for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I always say, in my opinion, right? But this is really shaping up. And when we start studying and seeing more than a, a little picture of what's going on in in our little neck of the woods and start reaching out a little bit. That's one been one really awesome thing about this YouTube channel is, is uh, I've been able to communicate with people from r- literally all over the world that, that um, have a little different perspective than say, you know, people in the United States, particularly in the West, that just kind of, you know, we have our thing and we do our thing and we have a little discomfort here and there. But trying times are coming. And when we see that happening in Israel, get ready, get ready. Now, that's not to say that we're not going to have issues here in the United States. I firmly believe we are. I think I think we're going to have shortages of food. I think our water's going to be comp- compromised. I think... Um, uh, uh, other things are going to happen. Now, I had somebody ask, you know, where would be a good place to survive? You know, what what geographic area? So I don't really have a lot to say about that. I think it's more what's in our heart and what's our desire to let God prevail in our lives, as as President Nelson said. I think I think that's more important than anything. But if you had a choice and you had the ability, I would obviously go to some place that. The, the climate was was conducive to growing things and and to not be really harsh uh, either too hot or too cold <laughs> um, this porridge is too hot and this porridge is just right right um, cold can be very difficult when things get tough right and and of course the heat but the heat seems to be able to uh, we can handle, I think better than the cold. So if you have a choice, that would be that would be something that you know if you're looking and you could move anywhere and do anything, I would go where I could grow a, a, a really nice garden, and anything else that that might be um, handy as far as animals or or whatever, chickens, um, you know, anything like that. Now, having said that, I wouldn't like leave a home that you're comfortable in and. And that you have a, a, a place for, you know, a little garden or whatever, um, or or particularly by family and loved ones. I there's no way I'd leave that. Um, God knows our hearts, and He'll qualify us, and He'll 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 ratify and sanctify the the effort that we put in to to do what we can do within reason. We we don't he doesn't require us to 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 run faster than we can walk. No, that's not right. Anyway, he he wants us to do things in a in a calm way, right? So let's not do anything radical. But on the other hand, if we have a choice or we have the ability, yeah, that's that would be my recommendation. But I'm excited. I'm excited uh, as I study these things and and uh, look at other points of view. I love the timelines of of uh, uh, many on YouTube <laughs> that are members of the church. Um, I I love the the research and the study. I think I think it it gets us looking and pointing. I love all the comments about conference. And let me say this too, while I'm rambling, covering a lot of topics today, um, I, I don't want anybody to think that I'm going against the brethren when I when I point out the the government control about masks. The brethren wore masks during conference 
basically because they had to, uh, they're compelled to, in order for us to have any kind of ability to meet, uh, to do anything. If the brethren weren't wearing masks, none of us would have worn masks. And next thing we know, the government would have shut down everything again. And at least we're having some ability to meet. But I still think we need to, you know, think here, ears to hear, eyes to see what's going on. And how, how this is a mandate. And I doubt, I mentioned this in one of my comments but um, that I wrote to somebody. I doubt very seriously that the brethren would have us wearing masks if it wasn't mandated by the state. Or, or, or whatever state you're in or the country that you're living in. That's why they do it. I don't think they randomly would have said, you know, we have this virus here. And uh, nobody's asking us to do it, but I think it's a good idea that we wear it. We have, we have the flu seasons. We have all kinds of things. We've had a history of, of other uh, pandemics. And I don't recall ever having uh, been requested by the church to wear a mask unless, you know, the government says so. So they're, they're doing what... Um, the article of faith says that we're subject to, to, to principalities and the powers that be. Um, there's several scriptures in the New Testament that talk about this, uh, that Christ himself mentions, that, that we, have to, we have to do what we have to do. But that doesn't mean that we can't do it with knowing what's going on, right? Right? So, so I hope nobody thinks that I disagree with the brethren on, on what they're doing. I wear a mask where I absolutely have to, and, you know, I, I just do it. I don't enjoy it, but I do it. And, and I don't think we have to do it with joy. I, I, that just boggles my mind. We, if you really look, you can see the effects of long-wearing masks uh, people that wear masks for long periods of time. It's not good for your health. And it also causes you to not uh, look at people. It, it causes you to, to not um, um, engage because it's so awkward. And most people end up pulling their mask down when they talk. Have you noticed that? They pull their mask down so that they can communicate. Some have learned how to do it. Uh, but anyway. Okay, so Ezekiel... Uh, 38, 39, um, and uh, when you're reading maybe 34 through 38, look at the, the mountain of Israel, the mountains of Israel, which I think is the West Bank. And I've talked about that before, and I've also uh, had that ratified by Derek Walker, um, which was kind of cool. You know, when you, when you have a thought or think of something and then someone else does that, you know, it happens all the time on these, the, this YouTube. Uh, the comments have been just so awesome. And even those that, that I might not agree with or they might not agree with me, generally they bring up some really good points. And so, you know, I've had, I had one that said, you know, I'm not going to subscribe anymore to this channel because I don't know if it was so much what I said, but what other people said. And you know, I, I hate to see that, but on the other hand, you know, if it's not your place, you know, I, I totally get that. But uh, uh, for the most part, I think it's been wonderful for me uh, to to hear and to listen and to learn from from everybody. Um, um, is it Dan Wilkinson? Dan Wilkinson, the the British uh, timeliner fascinating guy and he I, I was listening to him this morning he said that um that his like favorite quote from forever was the quote from uh president Iring in the women's session of conference where he said something like and don't you know pin this on me because it's not exact but something like you know you women and your daughters and their daughters or your Let's see, you, your daughters, and your granddaughters are going to be part of this preparation to welcome the city of Enoch. I mean, <laughs> and I heard that, and I wrote it down, and it blew my mind. 
But just to hear him say that again and and bring it up, um, you know, I mentioned this. I, I, I teach a, a mission prep um, in our stake. And uh, it's kind of a mission prep slash next ordinance class. And um, we team team teach and it's it's just well we don't team teach but we take turns there's three of us that that teach and it's just interesting to see the different perspectives and the different um things that we got out of conference mine was all on preparation (laughs) Uh, get ready uh it's coming i can't wait and all these exciting things, you know, we're talking about New Jerusalem, we're talking about the city of Enoch, we're talking about, uh, um, you know, the need for water and food, and, you know, that's what I got. And other people got totally different things out of conference, which was great for them and awesome for them. But my focus is on this. So anyway, God bless y'all. Uh, the dogs have been good here laying on the floor. And and uh, I apologize for the phone going off a, a time or two there. Um, I have uh, limited uh, uh, knowledge of technology. And I don't really want to do any more than what I'm doing here as far as, as uh, having pictures and uh, links and all that. Um, this is just me behind a microphone looking at a screen, looking at you, talking to you, and then, and then generating a, f- uh, 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 a format for people to communicate back and forth that are like-minded and, and thinking of these things. So that's, that's kind of the purpose of it. So that's it. Okay, talk to you soon. And these are indeed... Oh, I was going to sing a song. Um, um, <clears throat> Nobody told me there'd be days like these. Nobody told me there'd be days like these. Nobody told me there'd be days like these. Strange days indeed. Most peculiar, mama. Strange days indeed. Now that's a John Lennon song. And um, he's wrong. Because he said nobody told us there would be days like these. And he's wrong because we have Daniel, we have Ezekiel, we have Isaiah, we have Christ himself, we have Nephi, we, <laughs> we have Mormon, we have Moroni, we have uh, John. Okay, so we have all kinds of people that have told us about days like these.